Hi, I'm James. I'm the head vet here at Auckland Zoo and, and today's an exciting day for me. So I'm about to set off on a, a two-week trip down to Fenewaho to Codfish Island uh, to work with Kakapo, uh, doing some veterinary health checks with the dock rangers down there. Beautiful morning here, so we've flown out to Fenuaho and I'm stood here in the dock hut. It's not so mountainous, but it's certainly hilly and we'll be doing a little bit of walking up some, some of the trails. And once we get a good signal, then Jen will be uh, telling us where to walk off trail. So the first bit is similar to hill walking. Um, the second bit when you go off trail can be really hard work and it can be down hills and through streams and through bushes and yeah. So we're gonna go and see Punamu or see if we can find her. Every bird has an individual number and this is very directional so that helps us to locate exactly where the bird is. As we get closer that beep will get a lot louder. Kākāpō used to be pretty numerous, in fact some of the early European explorers described shaking them out of trees like apples. Uh, so they disappeared from the country pretty quickly with the arrival of things like stoats and cats and dogs. So it was really predation uh, and land clearance that drove them to near extinction. Kākāpō were transferred to some safe havens early on, so Whenuaho and Little Barrier Island in the north. And so those were sites that had very few predators. So as you walk among the trees here, you can hear all the native bird song. This is what it must have been like before terrestrial mammals invaded New Zealand. So this is a piece of wildlife history really here. Whenuaho is a nature reserve, entry by permit only. It's, so it's a really hard place to get to and it's the main site for most of our kākāpō management. Uh, there are 153 individuals left, uh, so they're critically endangered. But when the program started, there were just 50. As James will discover, kākāpō are incredibly hard to find. Getting a lot closer, we could be within 100 metres. It's hard to tell because it's so steep. Um, but we're going to leave our bags here, just have the GPS and the catch bag. Kākāpō are pretty good in their own environment and they can run really fast, particularly downhill. So Jen's going to try and get down the hill below her. So the birds in between the two of us, sometimes they freeze and hide. That makes it a bit easier for us. Sometimes they run, and if it runs, it gets um, a bit challenging. So we'll see how we go. You see her? Yeah. Eyes on. Yeah. A little bit strange if you're not used to it, but this is the safest way to carry a bird in a dark bag. And she's always got a lot to say for herself. It's quite normal for her. And we'll go back up to the bag and do the health check. Auckland Zoo Vet Department have had a long-standing relationship with Kakapo Recovery. I've been lucky enough to be involved for the last four and a half years that I've been at Auckland Zoo. When I was a little boy, I always knew I wanted to be a zoo vet and part of what I imagined that might entail was going out into the wilds and helping save endangered species. And sometimes I have to pinch myself because I get to come to places like this. It's a privilege to be here and hopefully the input we give can contribute in some way to saving the species basically in the future. This is Panami. Uh, she's the noisiest kakapo in the world. <laughs> 12 years old and she's had chronic Chlorocytis issues for since 2009, I think, um, which is why we're checking her today.
Punamu is actually the first kakapo that I ever met. When I arrived in New Zealand in 2013, she was up at the zoo receiving treatment. Um, so it's kind of nice for me to see her, although I don't think she was so pleased to see me. 